Hostile neutralized. Mission failed. Yeah, it's one of those games. Raven Shield is the last entry in the Rainbow Six series to claim to be a realistic game. It takes pride in its methodical, slow and highly lethal gameplay. However, it fails on almost every level. Let's begin. Before each mission starts, you get to plan out the operation. You can bring up to 8 people on the battlefield and give them a variety of weapons, armors and tools. One cool part of the game is the fluff. Weapons have descriptions, officers have biographies, and missions have thorough briefings with your superiors speculating on who's behind the whole thing. When selecting your team you should also consider stats. I won't go in detail on each one, just know that demon electronic specialists aside, they all have a place. Weapons even have different attachments, although you're going to mostly use the silencer. Now here's the problem, you're not supposed to get into the enemy's line of sight because of, you know, this. But while weapons are lethal, the tools you are given to play around gunfights are all completely useless. Flashbangs are a coin toss. Tear gas have a small AOE, doesn't stop people from running away and it forces you to equip a gas mask. Frags are either hit or miss or when stealth is paramount a detriment. And the other explosive you get are memes as well. You should use them to lay down ambushes, but why? The enemy seldom pushes you and if they do it's one of the time anyway, so why not use guns? Hostile neutralized. I guess you can open double doors with them. Sometimes. There's only two tools that never let me down. The somewhat short-ranged heartbeat sensor and the smoke. You can combine it with a VSS and a thermal scope to just shoot people without aggroing anyone. Furthermore, you're also invisible when on the edges of it, so thermal is optional. What about the other tools? While the enemy eye is awful, the allied one is... well, also bad. Maybe worse, it's wildly inadequate to carry out most tasks. Easily demonstrated with the totally useless but cool feature that let bots execute your plan while you spectate. This is the first mission with a game given plan on the easiest difficulty. See, at least the enemies will turn to face gunshots. What they excel at is breaking into a room full of stunned enemies to outshot them effortlessly and without endangering hostages or teammates. The problem is that you can't order your squad to breach and clear like you would in, let's say, SWAT 4. There's no option to use breaching charges. You can use them yourself, but you then have to switch character to get in in time. Even when asked to toss a flashbang, they will stand in front of the door. Flash and clear. I'm on it. Off the man! I know this was 2004, but Swan 3 had better AI in 1999. How do you play this game then? Well, you're supposed to lay down a plan before a mission in a menu which resolution you can change. Plans can get pretty intricate, but at the end of the day your first try will never go smoothly. So you readjust the plans and try again. Rinse and repeat. It's nothing but trial and error. But the feeling of relief when you finally finish a level is immense. Mission completed. Warehouse is secure. Extract. Amazing. Mission complete. That right there is why you're the best, boss. The one and only. You're pretty good.
Not being able to quick save encourages you to take your losses instead of retrying for the perfect mission, but some of your people can even die while idling in spawn. How I've got no idea, but fact is you need to babysit them. Every time I heard gunfire that was a minor directed at me, my heart skipped a bit. Green, man down. So instead of using bots as people, you use them as taxis. You do their combat bits, swap teams, and while you do another combat section, the previous squad will be on the move until it reaches a go code. The path of least resistance will be to just use a squad of three people and switch between the guys based on what tool you need. This way you can completely skip the planning section. Technically you could just load a dev made plan, but they usually tend to overestimate the AI's capabilities. So yeah, sadly you can't rely on either friendlies or your tool that much, so the game ends up being a luck based unenjoyable mess. Mission failed. A bomb was detonated. Especially when hostages or bombs are involved. Mission failed. Mission failed. Mission failed. Mission failed. Mission failed. Hostile neutralized. Mission failed. Hostile neutralized. Threat neutralized. Mission failed. Mission failed. Hostile If you're lucky, maybe they'll start throwing grenades instead of doing anything useful. Come to think of it, even gunfights are RNG based. Tango, down. Side note, who put explosive barrels in this tactical simulator? The levels aren't even held together by a good narrative thread. There is one, it's just not very good. During each briefing you get some intel and backstory on the mission. Each one is connected to the opening cutscene. Too bad it came straight out of an Indiana Jones movie. Basically some Germans eat some money and now some German speaking South American neo-Nazi use said money to be evil. Serviceable, but nothing to write home about. However, there's more to Raven Shield than the base game. There's two expansions. First, Athena Sword, or as I call it, Antonius Vacation. The snake. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. I had my dude Lone Wolf every level, except the last one where he called in sick for lead poisoning. Tango, down. This expansion is set in Italy? Nice. Buy some boyoki next time you visit, guys, they're delicious. Maxi Pino, Maxi Pino! New contents beside the maps, few weapons, hostages reskins, and these ugly bastards. Then there's Iron Wrath, more of a mod than an expansion. It's free and it's more content, but everything seems to lack a bit of polish here and there. It sports the easiest missions despite their size. So an irredeemable quality? Well, you can open doors slowly and lean incrementally. Okay, memes aside, you need some very thick nostalgia goggles to enjoy this game. Threat neutralized. On. I've had to Mission down. completed. I admit, however, that in a masochist kind of way, Raven Shield was somewhat fun. It offers the same feeling that all video games marketing themselves on difficulty rely on. Meaning that yes, all the hours I played were painful, but finally overcoming a difficult level felt amazing. Alas, this doesn't really salvage the game, it's more of a side effect of so many things falling flat on their faces. And while Ghost Recon didn't have any way to play around the frustrating moments, Raven Shield just gives you faulty tools. So in conclusion, Rainbow Six 3 wore my patience thin. At the end of the day, there's way better tactical shooters than this one. It's trial and error through and through, and the only way to avoid it is to cheese the AI and accept the inevitable losses of your squad mates. I don't recommend it, but it's very cheap, especially on sale, so if you want to re-experience some memories or if you crave a frustratingly difficult experience, don't let me stop you. At least it has doors, so I guess it one up Siege. Okay, that's all. Thanks for watching. See ya! Threat neutralized. Tango. Threat neutralized.
Tango, death. Threat neutralized. Hostile threat damage. 